Well, hello, this is Vincent Green, and we're going to continue our 52 weeks of reading through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We're now in week number 12, day number 3, and we're going to be reading Judges chapters 15, 16, and 17. Three chapters. And this continues the story of Samson. <clears throat> Later on, during the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat as a present to his wife. He said, I'm going into my wife's room to sleep with her, but her father wouldn't let him in. I truly thought you must hate her, her father explained, so I gave her in marriage to your best man. But look, her younger sister is even more beautiful than she is. Marry her instead. Samson said, This time I cannot be blamed for everything I am going to do to you Philistines. <clears throat> then he went out and caught 300 foxes. He tied their tails together in pairs, and he fastened a torch to each pair of tails. Then he lit the torches and let the foxes run through the grain fields of the Philistines. He burned all their grain to the ground, including the sheaves and the uncut grain. He also destroyed their vineyards and olive groves. Who did this, the Philistines demanded. Samson was the reply, because his father-in-law from Timnah gave Samson's wife to be married to his best man. So the Philistines went and got the woman and her father and burned them to death. Because you did this, Samson vowed, I won't rest until I take my revenge on you. So he attacked the Philistines with great fury and killed many of them. And then he went to live in a cave in the rock of Etam. The Philistines retaliated by setting up camp in Judah and spreading out near the town of Lehi, or Lehi, or Lehi. The men of Judah asked the Philistines, why are you attacking us? The Philistines replied, we've come to capture Samson. We've come to pay him back for what he did to us. So 3,000 men of Judah went down to get Samson at the cave in the rock of Etam. They said to Samson, don't you realize the Philistines rule over us? What are you doing to us? But Samson replied, I only did to them what they did to me. It's called payback, right? But the men of Judah told him, We have come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. All right, Samson said, but promise that you won't kill me yourselves. We will only tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines, they replied. We won't kill you. So they tied him up with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. As Samson arrived at Lehi, the Philistines came shouting in triumph. But the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson, and he snapped the ropes on his arms as if they were but strands of flax, and they fell from his wrists. Then he found the jawbone of a recently killed donkey. He picked it up and killed 1,000 Philistines with it. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, I piled them in heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey, I've killed a 1,000 men. And when he finished his boasting, he threw away the jawbone. And the place was named Jawbone Hill. Samson was now very thirsty, and he cried out to the Lord, You have accomplished this great victory by the strength of your servant. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of these pagans? So God calls water to gush out of a, ho of a hollow in the ground at Lehi, or Lehi, and Samson was revived as he drank. Then he named that place the spring of the one who cried out, and it is still Lehi to this day. Samson judged Israel for 20 years during the period when the Philistines dominated the land. You're seeing Samson's might here, right? He's able to, uh, he kills a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. But it is the Lord who gives him the strength, right? The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson. But notice he says, I've done this. I've done this. And and the Lord provides him drink, but he's, uh, Samson is saying, you've accomplished the great victory by the, by the strength of your servant. 
God, you've been able to do this by, by my strength. And so there's the issue with Samson. There is an issue with him. Chapter 16. One day Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza and spent the night with a prostitute. Word soon spread that Samson was there. So the men of Gaza gathered together and waited all night at the town gates. They kept quiet during the night, saying to themselves, When the light of morning comes, we will kill him. But Samson stayed in bed only until midnight. Then he got up, took hold of the doors of the town gate, including the two posts, and lifted them up, bar and all. He put them on his shoulders and carried them all the way to the top of the hill across from Hebron. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Sorek. The, the rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, Entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overpowered and tied up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what it, what it would tie, take to tie you up securely. Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried, I would become as weak as anyone else. So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings, and she tied Samson up with them. She had hidden some men in one of the inner rooms of her house, and she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snaps when it's burned by a fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can, you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes and tied them up with them. The men were hiding in the inner room as before. Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. Then Delilah said, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me how you can be tied up securely. <clears throat> Samson replied, If you were to weave the seven brands of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle, I would become as weak as anyone else. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven brands of his hair into the fabric tightened it with the loom shuttle, and then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. Samson woke up, pulled back the loom shuttle, yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. Then Delilah pouted, How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, <clears throat> for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as anyone else. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, so she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands, Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with her head in, his, in her lap. Then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down, and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. And when he awoke, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They took him to Gaza, where he was bound with brawn chains and forced to grind grain in the prison. But before long, his hair began to grow back. The Philistine rulers held a great festival, offering sacrifices and praising their god, Dagon, or Dagon. They said, Our God has given us victory over our enemy Samson. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy to us. The one who killed so many of us is now in our power. Half drunk by now, the people demanded 
Bring out Samson so he can amuse us. So he was brought from the prison to amuse them and they had him stand between pillars supporting the roof. Samson said to the young servant who was leading him by the hand, Place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple. I want to rest against them. <clears throat> now the temple was completely filled with people. All the Philistine rulers were there, and there were about 3,000 men and women on the roof who were watching as Samson amused them. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again, O God. Please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple. Pushing against them with both hands, he prayed, Let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. Later, his brothers and other relatives went down to get his body. They took him back home and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal, where his father Manoah was buried. Samson had judged Israel for 20 years. So this is the story of Samson. It's an interesting story. In a sense, he turns his heart from the Lord. Even though the Lord left him for a period of time when his hair was gone, <clears throat> his hair grew back. But at the end, he cries out to God. There's a lot about Samson that we don't want to mimic. He has ego. <clears throat> he is a womanizer. But you see the faithfulness of God throughout, protecting his people. Chapter 17. <coughs> There was a man named Micah who lived in the hill country of Ephraim. One day he said to his mother, I heard you place a curse on the person who stole 1,100 pieces of silver from you. Well, I have the money. I was the one who took it. The Lord bless you for admitting it, his mother replied. He returned the money to her and she said, I now dedicate these silver coins to the Lord. In honor of my son, I will have an image carved in an idol cast. So when he returned the money to his mother, she took 200 silver coins, gave them to a silversmith, who made them into an image and an idol. And these were placed in Micah's house. Micah set up a shrine for the idol. He made a sacred ephod and some household idols. Then he installed one of his sons as his personal priest. In those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. One day, a young Levite, who had been living in Bethlehem and Judah, arrived in that area. He had left Bethlehem in search of another place to live, and as he traveled, he came to the hill country of Ephraim. He happened to stop at Micah's house as he was traveling through. Where are you from? Micah asked him. He replied, I am a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah, and I am looking for a place to live. Stay here with me, Micah said, and you can be a father and priest to me. I will give you ten pieces of silver a year, plus a change of clothes and your food. The Levite agreed to this, and the young man became like one of Micah's sons. So Micah installed the Levite as his personal priest, and he lived in Micah's house. I know the Lord will bless me now, Micah said, because I have a Levite serving as my priest. That's an interesting story, isn't it? You say, what's the point of this one?
Micah wants to go through the guise of religion. You get this statement. Everybody's doing um, what seemed right in their own eyes. For Micah, he's going to have his household idols. He's going to worship those idols as though they're God. And he convinced a Levite. He pays him to be a personal priest and thinks, I know the Lord's going to bless me now because I have a Levite serving as my priest. Interesting concept. But it's faulty logic. I got the right kind of person, descendant of the tribe of Levi. He's my personal priest. He's going to live in my home. And he gives him 10 pieces of silver a year. A change of clothes pays for all of his food. He becomes like one of Micah's sons. Looks like everything's going to go well. Everybody's happy. But what do you see? You do not worship the true God of heaven in the form of an idol. They're not following the Lord here. It's, it's important for us to make sure we worship the Lord, the true God of heaven, in the right way. We can't worship the Lord based on our own feelings and the way we think about it. We need to follow God's way, God's pattern, as revealed in Scripture. That's the priority. That's not happening here, as you can well see. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we do thank you for your word. Lord, as we see patterns of sin in people uh, like Samson and, and here Micah, Lord, we, we also know that you are the perfect one. And we have to know and realize that these same patterns of sin cannot be in our life. That we have to worship you the way you have stated in your word. The way you have stated as your truth. And Lord, I pray that we would be mindful of you. That we would be mindful of all that you have said to us. And that we would follow you each and every day. May you receive all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.